Hey guys, what's going on? It's Louie Louie here. Today I want to go over some misconceptions that beginners generally have about table tennis. If you're new to the channel, then thank you so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. You can join my channel Discord server if you want to message me, chat with some other members of the community, or kind of just have some fun uh, and learn some more about the sport. And I'll have the link for that down below in the description and also pinned to my comment section. Um, and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel just so that you can help support the content. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so the first misconception that I want to go over is the misconception that table tennis is slow. And I think this one stems from the fact that to an untrained eye, table tennis just looks like a slower or, or excuse me, yeah, like a slower or smaller version of tennis. Um, and especially if you're watching videos of table tennis online, it has to do with the camera angle, it makes the sport look very slow. Um, which I guess is partially due to the um, kind of companies that record the matches. But anyway, it looks slow. Um, but what a lot of people don't realize is how fast the sport actually is and how physically demanding it is. And I want to share some statistics with you just to give some insight. Um, so off the racket, a professional table tennis player can hit the ball about 125 kilometers per hour, which um, is about, what, like 70, 75 miles an hour. That gives you less than 0.09 seconds to react. For comparison, you have about 0.38 seconds to react to an MLB fastball you have slightly under half a second to react to an average tennis serve. So in other words, you have over four times longer to react in either of those two sports in comparison to a table tennis shot. Um, the other thing people don't realize, and this kind of goes hand in hand with the speed, um, is the level of spin generated in table tennis. So a professional table tennis player spins the ball at over 9,000 RPM, there have been records of the ball spinning at 10,000 RPM, which is just absolutely ridiculous levels of spin. Um, so just to give you an idea, that is at or more than three times um, the amount of spin that's generated in baseball, tennis, golf, soccer, or any other sport in which the ball tends to spin. So um, it's, it's not even close in this category, which means that while you may not be able to see it if you're like watching a match on YouTube or on the TV, the effects of the spin add just one more layer of complexity that the players have to deal with. Um, so I, I bet um, you've probably, if, you, if you've watched some matches on YouTube, you may have wondered when one player is really far back and they're kind of just hitting the ball into the air and the other player is close to the table and smashing, why doesn't the player that's smashing just change and play a drop shot? Wouldn't they just win the point right away? And the answer has to do with that spin. Um, they can, but it's a really risky shot. Um, even if they land the shot because of the spin, um, the ball could just get killed past them. Um, or they could just outright miss. So there are some instances where players do go for it and a lot of the time they miss um, And then if they do end up landing that shot, it ends up like a highlight reel shot because it's just such a risky um, risky shot All right, so the second misconception that I want to go over also goes hand in hand with the speed And it's that you don't really need to move that much to play table tennis, especially compared to uh, a sport like tennis um, so like with the first misconception, I think this stems from the fact that the table is quite small um, compared to, I mean, honestly, any other sport. Um, the field or the court is a lot bigger than a table tennis court, so it brings up the idea that you really don't have to move that much. Um, but due to how fast the ball travels and how much it can curve, the footwork in table tennis is some of the most demanding of any sport. Um, if you like just go on Google and you look at the likes of any professional table tennis player, they're like tree trunks. And it's for a good reason. Not only do you have to cover large distances um, in a short period of time, but you also have to continuously move um, with short and explosive leg movements for balls that seemingly haven't moved that much. Um, and the reason for this is you can't really stretch in table tennis. If you stretch your arm to get to a ball or you lean one way or the other, you're going to lose the point. Uh, the spin and speed from your opponents will just cause you to miss. So even when the ball moves an inch one way or another, you have to be constantly moving. Um, so there's always these small kind of like um, split steps, I guess, and then very explosive large movements at the same time. Um, and the movement gets pretty intense. I'll probably have some clips playing as I talk about this. Um, but they kind of highlight this, but yeah, the movement in table tennis is another, I think, um, general misconception that a lot of players have. All right, so the third misconception that I hear a lot is the pen hold is the proper way to play table tennis, or pen hold is the proper way to hold the paddle. 
Um, so a question that I've gotten a lot from people who don't play table tennis is about the grip. Um, specifically, they'll come up to me and they'll be like, is the pen hold grip the proper way? And shake hand is like the noob grip, right? And in reality, the answer is both of these grips are viable. Um, and there have been players at the top of the world rankings that use both of them. Um, so the current uh, world rank number one, Ma Long, or I think it's Ma Long, it might be Fan Zhendong. Um, but either way, both of these players are shake hand players. Um, the top pen hold player in the world right now is Xu Xin. He's also been world ranked number one. And then you have some legendary uh, pen hold players like Ma Lin. So uh, really both styles are viable. Shake hand is actually more common, um, but there's no correct way to hold the paddle as long as it's shake hand or pen hold. Um, of course, there are some random grips that would be incorrect, but pen hold is not the proper way to play. All right, so the fourth misconception that I want to go over is, um, it has to do with rules and it's something that I also see a lot when beginners are playing, and it's that you have to serve to a specific part of the table. Uh, so I've seen so many beginners, uh, like when I'm just kind of at the club, make up rules as they're playing a singles match that don't exist. And some of them are, um, are pretty interesting, I'm not gonna lie, but the biggest that I've noticed is just the misconception that you have to serve to some location. Um, so I've heard like, you have to serve long, it's not allowed to double bounce. You have to serve within the table. You can't like serve outside, um, serve wide outside the white lines, um, and so on and so on. Um, so in doubles, if, if you're playing doubles, there are specific rules as it relates to serving that state that the serve needs to be cross court. It has to start on the right quadrant, bounce on that side, then go to the left quadrant. But if you're playing singles, there's no such rules. You can serve anywhere you want on your opponent's side, um, including short, long, wide, whichever spin your heart desires. Um, if you're good enough, you can serve and get it to come back to the net. That's not illegal. Um, as long as the serve follows the rest of the ITTF rules, so flat hand, six inches, um, behind the white line when you're tossing, double bounce. Um, as long as it follows all those rules, there's, no, there's nothing that says where you can and can't serve to. Um, and there's no rules that say whether you can spin or not spin, nothing like that. All right, so the final one that I want to go over, um, and it's kind of two in one, but it's the idea that table tennis is not popular or table tennis is not a real sport. Hey guys, what's going on? Louie Louie here. Yo, shut the hell up. You thought it wasn't even a real sport. I don't even think it's for a real sport like football. <laughs> And I think this one stems from the fact that in Western countries like the United States, it is indeed true that table tennis is not very popular. Um, so when people think table tennis, they think of the table in their basement or their garage where they go and play some drinking games. Um, so it doesn't really feel like a sport to them. Um, however, real table tennis, so not like having a table in your basement, but actually on a court or on a team or um, real professional style table tennis is one of the most popular uh, sports on the planet. Um, so it's the national sport of China, which I think is pretty incredible that it's actually the national sport of a country. Um, and there's an estimated 300 million players worldwide. Um, so there's many, many more people that play the sport recreational. I would assume that number's in the billions. But of people that play the sport, uh, real table tennis, there's still an estimated 300 million players, which is absolutely insane. That's more than the entire, um, well, not really. It's almost the entire population of the United States. Um, so extremely popular sport. Um, aside from China, it's also popular in a lot of Asian countries. It's popular in Korea, Japan. Um, I know that it's pretty popular in India, where I'm from in England. It's somewhat popular, definitely not as popular um, as kind of the Asian countries, but still more popular than America. Um, and then a lot of the European countries, it's pretty popular too. Germany is a big hub for table tennis. Um, and a lot of players in America that go professional actually end up training in Germany. Um, so definitely an extremely popular sport, definitely a real sport. Um, and in my opinion, one of the best sports that's ever been invented because um, you can play it individually, you can play it on a team, and really you're at your own mercy when you play the sport, which is why I like to play it. And with that, that's going to be the end of the video. So if you stayed for this long, I really do appreciate you watching. It does mean a lot for me. Um, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to drop a like, or if you didn't, definitely drop a dislike so that I can get that feedback and let me know what I can tweak for the next one. Um, if you guys like more content like this, then let me know as well, and I'll definitely keep making these types of videos because I enjoy them. And they're actually easier for me to make because it's kind of, um, I don't know, a little bit less uh, strenuous in terms of the editing. So I enjoy to make them, and it's still, I think, good information. 
But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I will catch you guys in the next video. And until then.